All right, welcome to episode 22. So this will be a fairly short and specific episode, and there are two things on the agenda. The first is I have chosen a name for our 6809 computer system, so I'll talk a little bit about that. But the main part of the video will be this CPU and glue logic PCB, and I'll talk about the layout, I will assemble it, and talk about one mechanical issue I would like to address, and then test it and see if it works. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I have chosen a name for our 6809 computer system, and basically the main reason is because I'm tired of saying 6809 computer system over and over again. So I wanted something short and distinctive, and my original idea was to actually call it the C63 with the idea that this system is going to be somewhat similar to the Commodore 64, except worse. But the name that I have chosen is the F68, and so the 68 means 6809. Eventually, I'm thinking of maybe having a successor system that uses the Motorola 68008, which would be uh, a nice upgrade for our system. So 68 gives us some future proofing in that sense. And the F doesn't really stand for anything. You know, maybe it's the grade I would get if I were to try to take an actual computer engineering course. All right, so henceforth, this system is called the F68. All right, future Dave here. Uh, we do eventually get this working, but as you will see, it's pretty much a complete comedy of errors. So be prepared to see some mistakes. All right, so here's my PCB design for the CPU and glue logic module, and there's not a ton to say about it. The one thing I will mention is that I used a technique that I learned about on EEV blog for laying out two-sided boards, which is that on the top layer, you have traces go in one direction. So in this PCB design, the traces on the top layer essentially are vertical, and then the traces on the other layer, the back layer, are going to be horizontal. And essentially what this allows you to do is just place Sevilla if you want to go from the top layer to the bottom layer, and it essentially works out that traces will not block each other. You never sort of get painted into a corner because you can always just go to the other layer and then go in the other direction without interfering with traces on the layer that you are on. So this makes it fairly straightforward to route essentially any arbitrary layout. However, it doesn't produce a particularly beautiful design, but it should be okay. One other thing I'll mention about the PCB design is that I've put two M3 mounting holes on either side of the backplane connector, and one thing I noticed in constructing the original versions of each of these modules on protoboard is that the backplane connector doesn't sit very securely. It will tend to flex when you put it into the backplane, and so I think I can design and 3D print some clips that will hold the connector more securely to the PCB. All right, so here's our PCB, and I think it turned out pretty well. I did notice one potential issue, which is I think these pull-up resistors are a little close to the edge, which is where the board is going to be held into position by the clip in the card cage, but that's, I think, not necessarily going to be a huge problem. So at this point, basically, I just need to solder components and IC sockets onto this board and, of course, the backplane connector, but I think before I do that, I am going to design and print the clips that will hold the backplane connector on more securely because I, I would like it to be as rigidly into position as possible before I start soldering these pins on because if I get it misaligned and then start soldering that really won't allow me to correct it later on so I should get it mechanically into the correct orientation first. So let's see what we can come up with with regards to clips that will hold this backplane connector more securely. All right, so here's the clip design I came up with in Open SCAD, and basically this lip sits against the bottom edge of the PCB, and then this lip here holds tight against the top of the backplane connector, and then the entire clip is held securely against the PCB using an M3 bolt, and there is a pocket for a square M3 nut here. So hopefully with one of these on each side of the backplane connector, we will have a nice secure mechanical connection that will keep the backplane connector securely in place. All right, let's go ahead and print these and then see if they work. Okay, so I've printed the two brackets, the left bracket and the right bracket. So here's the left bracket and basically it will just sit in place right here against the side of the backplane connector and there's the hole for the M3 bolt and the, the nut. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and attach these and then see if we get some good mechanical support for this connector. 
All right, so I have screwed the two clips into place and it seems like we have pretty good mechanical support here. This feels quite solid and, and, and rigid. So I'm hoping that this means that the connector will not flex as much as it did on the proto board. So, okay, with the connector held securely in place, I think I am now ready to gather the components and to start soldering. All right, so I think I'm too lazy to try to set up a whole soldering montage here. So instead, let's do it by magic. Okay, one, two. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but I think it would be helpful if we had some ICs in the IC sockets. All right, let's do this again. All right, this looks pretty good. I think before I actually test this, I'm going to sit down with the schematic and the multimeter in continuity mode and just make sure that all of the connections are correct. So I will do that and then meet you back. All right, so I have checked all of the connections on the PCB using the multimeter in continuity mode against the schematic, and everything does seem to check out, including both the internal routing and also the routing to the backplane connector, so that all looks good. One thing that I will note is that there is a resistor network here that serves as pull-up resistors for the external data bus, and I've not installed that yet because I simply haven't had one of those previously. This is a new part that I added, and I want to see if it works as before, before I add this new component. Okay, so I think we are ready to actually power up and see if it works. Well, I have discovered that I've made a mistake on the PCB layout. So here in this text file, I have a diagram of the backplane connector. And as you can see, the positive supply rail should be on the same side as the control signals. The ground connection should be on the same side as the chip selects. Well, when I did the schematic, I got those reversed. So ground is on the same side as the control signals and the positive supply rails on the same side as the chip selects. So basically we're delivering power to the board backwards. So I think what I will do to fix this is I'm actually going to cut the connections between the backplane connector and the PCB so that I can bodge wires to the correct points on the PCB to actually deliver the power in the correct polarity. So kind of a screw up, but it is a recoverable screw up. So I guess that's okay. And I will fix this in the next board revision. All right, so I have actually been able to fix the problem. And essentially all I did was I just cut the pins on the backplane connector and just soldered wires to the correct entry points on the PCB. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see this was a really ugly repair. If the connector had not been soldered, if I had made this mod before I soldered on this connection, this would have actually been pretty easy. I could just pre-cut the pins, put some wires on them, solder all the pins into place, and then nicely route these wires into the PCB. But instead I had to somehow get in there with my soldering iron. And as you can see, I actually melted a little bit of the plastic housing of the connector. But the good news is that the mounting clip is going to somewhat cover up this ugliness and you'll just you just see a little bit of the exposed wire there so it looks like I have gotten away with this um, I did plug this into the back plane and check the supply voltages and they are correct now so let's put the ICs back and maybe we can test this all right, I realize I keep saying that I'm going to test this and then I never actually do test this. And off camera, I did try out plugging in the CPU and GlueLogic module with all the ICs on it. And of course it didn't work. And after a little bit of troubleshooting, I noticed that I wasn't getting valid chip selects for the various peripheral devices, in particular the UART. And what I noticed is that this 748CT138 chip that generates the first five chip selects, the first five chip selects are not actually routed to the backplane connector. And what really I think is strange about this is that there are no rat's nest wires showing me that these are unconnected nets because these signals on the backplane connector are clearly marked as being the same net unless I misspelled it, which is possible. But basically, I never noticed that I hadn't routed those, and so the PCB is wrong. So the good news is I can just bodge some, some wires on there to make those connections. And I think, crossing my fingers, I think that is the last mistake I will need to correct. 
All right, I have soldered the bodge wires on. I have to say, these are probably the neatest bodge wires I've ever done, so I'm honestly not too unsatisfied with this. I think this is okay. All right, so maybe I test it now and maybe it's going to work. All right, so I've got the CPU and glue logic module installed in the backplane and also the memory and peripheral module. Those are the only two that we actually need to run. So I am going to power on. Okay, finally it works. We have the boot up message. Let's type a couple commands just to make sure that things are actually working. Okay, that looks good. Let's try the reset button. That looks good as well. All right, I think finally this thing is working. All right, so just for purposes of comparison, here's the old CPU and glue logic module, and it definitely works. One issue with it is that there is so much wiring on the back, including these ribbon cables, that it sort of presses up against other backplane modules that would be behind it, which isn't ideal, kind of limits the places that you can put it. And of course, the backplane connector is not attached firmly and can flex. So even with the bodges, I think the new one is definitely kind of has a much more professional and neat appearance. Even with the bodge wires on the back, you know, it is almost perfectly flat. You know, the profile is much thinner. So overall, I am very satisfied with this, even with the mistakes I made on the PCB and the fixes that were required. I think this was a really good proof of concept of the new standardized form factor, including the mounting clips that make the backplane connector fit more firmly. So I am looking forward to designing and wiring up additional modules. There will be two more, the memory and peripherals, and then I think I'm going to combine the interrupt controller and the keyboard controller into a single module. So that will give us three total. All right, so just one last update for the sake of completeness. I did add a 4.7K resistor network on the data bus, and interestingly, the system does not actually work correctly with that installed. And in particular, the 6350 UART does not seem to produce valid data if that's populated. What's really strange is if there is data available, it can be read successfully, but if there's no data available, it looks to the CPU like like there is data available, which kind of suggests that somehow the resistor network is enough to change a bit in the data read from the control register of the UART, which is really odd. It shouldn't be possible that an actively driven signal cannot compete with a 4.7K resistor, but in any case, I've desoldered it. Everything works fine. The system has always worked fine without these pull-ups, so I'm just going to leave them off for now. All right, so that took quite a bit of work, but we did get everything completely working. So I did learn a couple lessons about PCB design and testing. So definitely when you are laying out a PCB and when you are testing a board, check all of the signals. Don't be lazy and omit some of the signals, such as signals going to external connectors. Be very careful about power connections. And one interesting thing is I also found out that it is not necessarily a good idea to rely exclusively on the PCB layout software's rat's nest feature to ensure that all of the signals are actually routed. So for whatever reason, it seems that KiCad sometimes doesn't show rat's nest wires for unconnected nets. And a little surprising, maybe it's a bug, maybe I did something dumb, but in any case, it doesn't hurt to double check things manually. And finally, this experience definitely reminded me of how important it is in electronics to persevere when things go wrong. When you encounter difficulties and when things aren't working the way that you expect, there are a lot of things you can do to try to figure out what is going wrong to debug, and most problems can be fixed. And if you just push through it, eventually you will figure things out. Okay, so that's definitely it for this video, and I will see you in the next video.